a lot, a lot of time, us as African, we mistake being competitors in business and, and, and in life. So right. it, is, it is something that we can never mix together because, you know, you can be, you know, I can have a salon, someone else coming up and next door to me and we're competitors, but in the evening we're going to have tea or coffee together, you know, and, and decide, you know, discuss how the day went. It can happen, but most time when you see that thing in black women, in African women, it doesn't happen like that. I think it's mainly due to people's mentality, where we come from. Right. So it's something that's been on people's head and in people's mindset that's really hard to change at the moment. I do think that it would take probably a whole generation or two generations change. For example, I have a business myself and I have no support from my own African sisters. Do you know, I would say if I have a hundred percent of customers, I have 5% African and my 95% is, you know, other ethnicities, which I have probably 70% percent of white customers and then the caribbean and then and then i'll have five percent of african people but when you thinking yourself that okay when i had the idea of starting the business i was actually thinking of my african sisters you know when you're thinking well you know you know i want to do good for our sisters our you know our, our children what we can do for them what, we can, what service we can provide for them but then when you find out is once you set up that business, you will get no support from your own people. Not yeah. You know, we have been through a lot through this pandemic. Dada has challenged so much. I have challenged, you have challenged, you have managed to challenge the situation that was actually meant to like almost take us. But we have challenged, but a lot, there's a, there's still a lot to challenge. For example, many women have, uh, across the world have really been uh, disproportionately affected by this pandemic. And this comes with obviously the barriers that uh, make a woman more vulnerable in terms of what they can do, in terms of what access they could have and so on. Think about those women maybe in Africa where we come from, in the rural areas, you know, looking at those barriers that uh, women are facing today and um, these barriers we have to challenge them. And we are the first people to challenge them as women. Obviously, the policymakers will also have to do something. And the corporate uh, organization, obviously, have to do something. But we women today, we have to challenge this situation. It's not only the pandemic. It's about so many other things around us. If we don't ch challenge those things, we could be swallowed by them, you know? And uh, it's very important that we stand on our ground, we come out stronger. I don't know, we've all heard each other's stories, uh, uh, Dada's story, Binta's story, Alice has been on this show just once, but it's, uh, it's really, it shows the strength that we have within us as women. But today we have so many other things obviously to challenge, not only looking at ourselves as women, but those women around us, not just me, but those women around me who cannot even talk about what they're facing, who cannot even everything, sit and try to, to find a solution because they don't know how and where. So now the floor is all yours. Let's challenge. What are you challenging? Like, for example, I personally really choose to challenge the bias and barrier that discriminate women. I choose to challenge poverty that women face every day that they can't even start a business, they can't even do something. Yeah, I choose to challenge certain things really that put a woman down. 
what are, what are you what are you challenging it's not about your challenge just it's what you're challenging and that means it's a change that you want to happen yeah the floor is all yours go on Vita, what are you what are you challenging what do you think should be changed i think uh, i think this uh, this pandemic show a lot of like a lot of strong women came out like there are lots of strong women who show how 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 powerful they are how how they are ready to fight for their kids uh, but they had lots of challenges to wish uh, like losing their jobs uh, like choosing if they're going to keep their jobs or just stay home with their kids because it's not every every woman is lucky to to go to work or work at home and also take care of their kids because there's a lot of single mothers that are really struggling and then my heart goes out to them really because i personally i'm lucky that i've got my husband here and then we share the responsibility i go to work he stay with the kid i stay with the kid he goes to work so it's not all the women have that kind of uh, support and also it's one yeah. of the things that i think uh, we women we should support each other and then we could women should speak speak and then they should know that there are a system that will be there to help them if there is no system we need to find a way how to create this this support system for them yeah. to come out of the situation where they are but it's all start with a conversation and it all it all start with understanding the struggle of our sister because the sister yeah. have to tell us how much she's struggling first for us to know that which way we're going to help her but if we don't know her story and if she's not willing to tell her story it's difficult to help her because uh, i personally know in my community they rather they rather stop than tell me that they are struggling or call me personally to tell me oh binta i'm struggling financially i don't know where to go i don't have enough to tell the story and then to challenge the, the system that we are living right now at the moment and i think that black women suffer more in this pandemic than white women uh, that's that's my opinion personally yeah so you challenge all that and you want women to speak up you want sisters to share to yes. contact each other and open up because if we don't know we don't know exactly yeah thank you so much for sharing alice what are you challenging uh in this moment of pandemic or something um yeah. Listen, Emerita, you know that I am a mother already. So being a mother in this time, having the kid around is really, really challenging. But knowing that I'm not the only person who's going through that. So um, yeah, I'm trying to fortify myself, like saying that it's going to be all right. As uh, Binta said about uh, having a system where people know where to go, uh, to go to, you know, because as you mentioned last time, people are struggling with me uh, mental health and stuff, but they just yeah. need people to hear them, you know. Sometimes we just need to give our ears to others to listen to their story. Not everybody is yeah. opening up because not e in this time around, we don't trust anybody in, uh, anymore, you know. So they have to yeah. trust you for them to be, uh, you know, able to open up and tell you what is going on in their life. So for me, as a, uh, for me, I think like the challenge is to know that whatever is going on is not just happening for me, it's happening for everybody. So I should not be putting myself in a place of uh, victim, but to know that, uh, you know, I am blessed to at least having my family around because uh, there are people who don't even have children, nobody to talk to. And if we can help with this, uh, you know, this platform that you are giving to people to, you know, to give their voice, to know what's going on with their life, it would be nice, you know, if you just kind as a woman, putting crown on anybody's head, it would be nice too. So that's, that's it for me. So what change do you want to see? The change I want to see, I want to see women encouraging each other, you know. I want to see women going ahead. I want to see women, you know, bringing skills out there, you know, not just... Um, for themselves but to know that we are in this battle together you know we need to be sisters no like competitors you know we need to be actually sisters that's what i want to see in women first because i can't put men because uh things happen when women put you know they you know they effort together they love together and uh, you know it happened because as we say if god had to be defined 
as a gender, I'll say that is a woman. So we need to know the we need to know the the impacts that we have in this world. So if we come you, we come together, we can produce something and see change in this world. That's what I want to see actually. There I go. Dada, welcome again. Hi. <laughs> so, what is that thing that you're challenging today? Um, when you're asking what we're challenging, is it just be because of the pandemic or is it in life in general? It, life in general, to be honest, because it's those change because when we challenge we change so those things we want to see changing whether in our personal lives whether in our community in our surroundings whatever you want to challenge and remain a strong woman or even stronger because we don't want to still down we don't want to give up we have to challenge and stand up I think yeah. if we have to talk about life in general, one thing that I always like to challenge is abuse and disrespect. Yeah. Because what I find is I find that the woman in general is very disrespected. And then when it comes to like a relationship life, you know, in general, a woman is more prone to abuse than when it comes to men. So I definitely think that as women, we have to fight extra hard. We have to work harder to try and prove ourselves. And even if we have to try and earn respect, like in the community or, or, or in life in general, we have to work harder than men and, and to prove ourselves. So I definitely think that, and because of the lockdown as well, we know that a lot of women have been going through abuse and abuse, whether it's physical, whether it's mentally, emotionally, you know, a women we've been going through a lot. And it's, you know, sometimes even when you're in a relationship, something may be happening where the woman is feeling emotionally uh, and mentally abused and people around her won't even know that she's actually being mentally abused. You know, even due to the pandemic, I found like, a lot of people have been arguing, there's been a lot of argument, a lot of misunderstanding, you know, because a woman is not understood properly. So I definitely yeah. think that, you know, as women, we need to stand up for ourselves and um, try and fight that and, and try and, um, you know, work harder and be more respected and and less abused you know i always i'm always into equality i'm always into you know empowering other women i'm always into women working hard you know to independence that is something that i'm always for as well you know as women we need to be independent because i do think that when you're independent uh, you know, life will be a bit more that easier because then you don't have to depend on anyone and, you know, yeah. you can find your own way. So I, I definitely think that as women, we, we need to stick together, you know, support each other, like uh, um, the other sister said, and um, go forward. Because if we, we, we keep putting each other down, then we're always going to stay in that same position that women have been fighting for, for over a hundred years now. Uh, and still there's not that much change. So that needs to change. Yes, that's true. I, I, I do agree with you. I agree with you all. Uh, you mentioned something of being independent. Talk about economic independence. Talk about economic freedom. When a woman is having that uh, economic freedom, I think they earn that respect. I don't know why, but uh, once we don't uh, ask for money from anyone and we can afford to buy whatever we want, I think we have that respect somehow. Yeah, but again, yeah, some women obviously, it's not everybody has that uh, chance. But how do we really promote that uh, economic freedom? I've seen sometimes uh, like uh, an African woman opening a business and uh, i'm not being <laughs> i'm not going to focus so much like because I'm, I'm from africa but obviously i'll talk about that but the thing is sometimes we don't support each other's business that's an example that's a that's an example like uh an african 
woman opens up a business here, like for example, that has a hair salon, and uh, another another race really opens a hair sa sa salon. Maybe they provide the same service, or that is even better. But I don't know for some reason. I feel like maybe the quality there is higher than what she's producing, and I would do, I would go to that person. So that area of supporting each other's business. I think we are lacking that. We are down. We need to to challenge that. We need to support each other's business. We need to support others. Like you know, I don't know how does that really sound because if we don't support each other's business, I don't think we can reach that level of um, financial freedom. Yeah, anyone can add on if you have something to add on. For me, I think that that's the problem. That that's one of the big issue. I think we. African women have because uh, it's not every sister will support your your other sister when they're having a business or they're doing something that is important to them. I think that's personally that's what I see. We don't there is no support between each other's uh, African woman that, as far as I'm concerned, the experience I had around me, and it's something that I need to change. I think because uh, I know we all have a different. Way way of doing things. But when it comes to supporting another woman, I think there's nothing, it doesn't matter about the differences that we have or we had before. I think we should just have to put that on the side and support each other mentally, physically, emotionally, you know, just be there for whatever that sister is going through. Because that's, uh, it's something that is very important. And it's something that I've seen in this pandemic that Few, few sisters being supporting each other with the phone calls and, and see I'm there if you need to talk and things like that. And then also some community just like some woman community or some community just uh, disappear. They stop like, you know, like calling each other or like be there for each other. I think that's what we need to change. We need to, we need to, the woman need to stop uh, thinking that we are competitive with each other. Mm -hmm. Because we all have different de different destiny, different road that we we gonna go through in life. So yeah, if we put that competition on the side and just be there for each other, we will grow like like we will grow as a woman together, and then we will fight whatever discrimination, whatever sexism, whatever abuse. We will fight everything together. I think that's where the main key of it is like. Uh, Stop thinking about she's my rival, she's my competition, and thinking about she's my sister. Let me there, let me support her hundred and ten percent, and then I know yeah. she's gonna get that support back. And if you don't get that support back, it's okay too because you can't change somebody's mindset how they think. You can only do what you think is best for yourself. Yeah, sure. I think when um. It, you know, you, we have to see the. You know, we have to find the difference between life and and business. You know, like a professional career and your life. They're two different things. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can actually be friends in life, but then you are competitor in business because I do think that you know competition in business is not a bad thing. It is actually a good thing because it can actually show why you're capable of like you know the difference in work and all of that so a lot a lot of time us as african we mistake being competitors in business and mm -hmm. and in life so right. it is it is something that we can never mix together because you know you can be you know i can have a salon someone else coming up and next door to me and we're competitors but in the evening we're going to have tea or coffee together you know, and, and decide, you know, discuss how the day went. It can happen, but most time when you see that thing in black women, in African women, it doesn't happen like that. I think it's mainly due to people's mentality, where we come from. Right. So it's something that's been on people's head and in people's mindset that's really hard to change at the moment. I do think that it would take probably a whole generation or two generations change the temple. I have a business myself and I have no support from my own African sisters. Do you know, I would say if I have a hundred percent of customers, I have 5% African and my 95% is, you know, other ethnicities, which I have probably 70% of white customers and then the Caribbean and then, and then I'll have 
5% of African people. But when you thinking yourself that, okay, when I had the idea of starting the business, I was actually thinking of my African sisters. You know, when you're thinking, oh, well, you know, you know, I want to do good for our sisters, our, you know, our, our children, what we can do for them, what, we can, what service we can provide for them. But then when you find out is once you set up that business, you will get no support from your own people. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah, that's true. Because all people would do is they would try to come and put you down. Yeah. When so you have to be very strong will to be able to put your foot down and say no. And when you put your foot down and stand up for yourself, is your own people that come and try to bring you down. Yes. Because when let's say when you offer a service for 50 pounds and someone's coming and telling you you're my sister, I'm gonna give you 30 pounds. No, that is no sisterhood. Nah. Because if you were my sister, you'll offer me the 50 pound I'm asking you and you give me a 10 pound tip on top. To prove that I'm supporting you. I'm 100% nah. with you. Yeah, that's, that's why. You know, that's why. but, but that, that support, we don't see it in our Africa community, which is sad. And the thing is, I always say when I'm talking, like talking more about African women, because I'm an African woman myself, we need to stop putting ourselves in a position of victims. You know, we need to counting ourselves as second class citizens. We need to stop counting ourselves as the weakest, you know, the weakest link in there, because we know we're actually strong. African women were strong. If you see back home where our, you know, grandmothers, our mom, they have a baby in the back and they'll have someone else on the head and they'll be there trying to plow some vegetables. So an African woman is strong, but I definitely think, yes, we can be physically strong, but mentally we need to change our mentality and you know, be actually start being happy for the other. Because yeah. once you're happy for someone else's progress is only where that then that you'll be able to progress yourself. Because if I'm going forward, then I'll be able to come and help Binta in something. Then I'll be able to come and help Emmy in something. But if you're not helping me go forward, then all of us are going to stay in the same boat. That's true. So I think that's, that's what I had to add, Amy. Thank you. Thank you for adding that. But really, how does that really make you feel? Opening up a business, having your sisters in mind, I'm opening this to offer service to them at the end they don't come for that service they go somewhere else <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's disappointing and sad trust me <laughs> exactly how you feel it's, it is sad for example for me like my 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 organization the foundation i created in africa for orphanages you have to remember 90 percent of people who support me are white people, are my white friends who give me stuff to support those orphanages. My African community, all this is, oh, they don't even wanna, they don't even wanna acknowledge that I have a foundation. They know I have a foundation. They know, they seen the work I've been doing because I've shown proof the work I've been doing and I've been doing a great job, but they didn't acknowledge. They didn't even say congratulations. They didn't say, oh, we are proud of you. How can we help? Oh, our, our family is in there, the same country as you. How can they help? Oh, how can I help from here? No, they didn't. But my white friends and my white community that I'm friends with, they're the one who's 90%, trust me, 90% helping me with my life. So it's sad. And also, when you try to, to show them that, yes, the work you are doing is important, they still don't acknowledge the work you're doing. They still don't even care. They don't even like they 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 put you on the side like they think uh, they are, they think maybe you are showing up like you are better than them. It's, it's, you know, you spend time with the when you go every month to that community and then you interact with them, but they're the one who doesn't do anything to support yeah. what the, the good deed you're doing. Is the outside has support? It's it's disappointed and it's sad. So where yeah, where, but, but where do we go from there? That's that's the problem. Now my question is really, how when something like that happens? We are all humans. We have emotions. We have feelings. <laughs> really sad. 
<laughs> it's, it's very sad. So, how, like, for example, uh, Dada, how did it make you feel and how did you react when you saw that actually only 5% where blacks and Africans and the rest were from the other ethnic groups and you opened a business really with a big high aim to serving African communities around you but they didn't show up. Amy, in my case, it actually made me build a thicker skin. That's right. So, you know, because you know when, you, when something is happening, let's say for example if a child is growing through abuse yeah so what happened is the more you're growing into that thing you're building a thicker skin against it where it doesn't affect you that much yeah <laughs> because like in my case i i built a thicker skin for myself i tried to protect myself and i i just had the attitude where i never expected them anymore same right you know, because then I was like, okay, I'm going to put all my focus and all the all effort into people who support me. Uh -huh. You know, because if we if we, we, we follow, you know, and just wait for our own sisters to come and support us, you never succeed. You never do anything. You never be able to progress, because all the like most of the time, I won't say like. All, everybody is the same i'm talking in general from experience that i've seen myself is that once you're trying to do good for yourself everybody's coming aiming to destroy you uh -huh. because that's you know that is what i found in my own experience and when you know that is something that's coming what you do you build a thicker skin against yourself where you you don't you just don't mind anymore. You just don't care. You don't expect anything, yeah. you know, and you, you focus like, you know, carry on on your way. You focus on why you're doing and where you're going. Just don't look back. Don't look on the side. You know, if you come, yes, it's fine. If you don't, yes, it's fine. If I tell you it's 50 pounds and you tell me you have 30 pounds, I tell you, no, I can't. And you go somewhere else. It's fine. Yeah. Because what I put in my head, I said, okay, I found out that, you know, in the beginning, I was thinking I'm doing it for my own sister, my own community, but now it actually is not for them. I'm going to focus on a different community and I'm going to do it for a different community. And that is what I decided on doing. <laughs> but then what yeah. we have to think as well is we, we need to remember that what we're doing is not for ourselves. You know, most of the time when we see a lot of African people in this country, we're probably the first or the second generation. I won't even say the second generation. You know, I'll say we are the first generation that coming from Africa, you know, a lot of us, second, first mm -hmm. or second generation. So we have to think of what we're actually building. You know, what are we doing for our future generation? What, are, what legacy are we leaving for our children? If you see Indian people, they've been here for, you know, probably two centuries and they've done something really good for the community, for the generation that are coming. You see a lot of uh, uh, women doctors, solicitors, lawyer, and African people were quite a long way from that. So we have to think how we're going to empower our own you know, not even talking about just our, about our daughters. What are we teaching them? What are they going to be in the future? We don't just have to uh, um, uh, bring up mothers and women to, to go into marriage and look after the house. No, we need to build business women as well. And all of that, when we, we, we do that, we have to think it comes from experience. What experience do we have that we're going to leave to our children to carry on what we're doing? We need to think about that as well. And when we are not supporting each other, we're just not going to go anywhere. Anyway, all we're doing, we're teaching our children how to put each other down, how to hate each other. Because if there's someone that's hating me, and if the friend is friend with my daughter, what they will tell them, I'm not going to go there because my mom doesn't speak to her or because my auntie doesn't speak to her. And all of those little things that what I said, they're like pointless things. We don't have to put that in our daughter's mind, our daughters who are coming, who maybe is going to replace us one, you know, at one point in our lives. 
So we need to be able to build a strong, independent generation of girls, of women that are coming up. We need to stop putting each other down. We need to support each other. You know, even if, even if you think you can support, then don't go and stop someone else supporting. If you don't want to support, yeah, step back, but then let someone else go and support, you know? Don't try and recruit everybody around you to stop supporting that sister's business or that sister's foundation or whatever that sister's doing, because that is wrong. And what we're forgetting is that we are stopping our community from going forward. Because we're here, if something happened back home in our country, it's only ourselves that maybe have to try and do something and help ourselves. We won't be going begging to other communities to come and help our community and help what's going on in our home country if we are not ready to support each other. How are we going to go and get support from other people? That's true. And um, can I just say something? What you just said about uh, sister supporting each other just uh, triggered an experience that I had when I had my daughter, which I'm gonna share. I know what I'm gonna share with you guys. When I when I had my my daughter Eva, she's seven now. Her first, I was doing her birthday party, her first one year birthday party, and because uh, and then I told all my community my. African community, all my community and friends, etc. I told them about my daughter's birthday and they all invited to come to the birthday. And one particular person in the community there told everybody not to go to my daughter's birthday party. Why? Did yeah, why? they all because because that particular person and I are no longer mm -hmm. friends. We're not like uh, hating each other. And we, we say hello to each other. Hi, how are you? Because we are in the same group of community. We have to like interact most of the time because we see each other once a month. Uh -huh. Particularly said that the, that person particularly came there as my daughter's birthday party. And then also warn everybody that nobody's allowed to go to my daughter's birthday party because they has a meeting wish the meeting could be done and then they could come to my daughter's birthday party because I did plan it so they could they, they won't have to miss the meeting and after me they could come to my birthday party. Some of them came and some of them didn't come. But uh, yeah, it, did, it, it did upset me because every time there is something in the community, I don't care who I get along with, who I don't get along with, I always do my part because I'm part of a community. I wanna show that I'm supporting my sister. It doesn't matter if that sister and I are friends or not. I always always 100% give my support to that person because if it's a community, we are there for each other, regardless of our differences. As far as I'm concerned, that's how I understand things. But uh, when that thing happened, it's really, really, really upset me. It really, it really yeah. questions me a lot. But I'm glad I didn't lost my faith in, in, in the situation because I could just leave the community and just get on with my life. It wouldn't bother me that much. But I just let it go and then just get on, keep doing what I'm doing for my community because I think it's important. Yeah, it's very important. And uh, you can't just say you are forgetting the community because whatever i do you're part of that community whatever happens yes. so that's very important that uh, we make changes ourselves yes. we have to change that mentality and that's the reason i think why we said we need to challenge certain things and we are challenging those behaviors today because they are not appropriate behaviors it keeps those behaviors really keeps us thinking that uh, we are not capable we are not good enough we are always uh, financially poor if you like we, yeah, we just see ourselves as African women, whether here or in Africa, thinking that no, it's not possible. Why? Because we are not making it possible ourselves. We are busy destroying each other's businesses, busy destroying each other's names, busy not supporting each other. For example, I do enter some uh, shops. I'm not going to mention names, obviously. But uh, for example, you go to certain booths and you find products, really and you find a number of uh, african women uh, you know lining up buying those products but you go to another shop you find uh, products maybe made by an african they would mention uh, organic uh, afro hair or something 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 or good for your face you know the, 
but uh, maybe in those shops. When you go there, you hardly see African women lining up like they are lying in the other shops, eh? in those other shops. So I'm like, oh, is it like body cream? Is it shop, soap? Is it uh, hair products? Why can't we line up? Really, I would feel so, I mean, impressed to see us lining up on the shop of our brothers or sister, buying and supporting their business. But really, we go to certain shops and find really busy, long line. I'm like, oh my goodness. And if you like, you will not even find a black person working in those shops. But they'll be busy buying, but you find a, a, an African person opening a store, no one is there. No one is there. Oh. Then you wonder, how is this person's business going to grow? We've got a big community here, but they're not there for this person. They're lining up somewhere else, not even find the customer service they're receiving. Yes, could be great, but they're not even seeing someone like them, but they're still, they believe that that's a better quality. If I produce something, they'll say, ah, oh, made by an African woman now. I question the quality. I don't think so. Quality. <laughs> <laughs> so but it matter. <laughs> but Emerta, can I say something? Because I think when you, you know, when you're doing a business or you want to open a business, I think in mind you should not be putting like a limiting. Uh, you should not putting a certain people that should come to your to your to your business to support your business because it's where you're gonna be disappointed, you know. Because when you do something, you know why you're doing it. Because when you do business, it's serving others. You know, you want to serve your your community. But if you expect that full support for your community, I'm telling you, you're not even gonna have it. Even not the community what? people that you don't even know, even your own family, your own friends, they won't support you, you understand? The only thing is like, if you have to lay on their support for you to actually put your, um, um, actually to make, uh, to make your business happen, then you're gonna fail, you understand? Because I always say that there is audience for everybody. Because if it was just because there were only one shop selling bread, then uh -huh. nobody will be uh, nobody will, uh, will sell bread as well, you know. But when you put something others, it's like it's the law of the universe actually. When you put something others, God will actually provide co customer for you, you know. As uh, our sister say, she she made uh, she opened a business. She thought that um, African people would come, but she she actually learned as a skill by doing hair of white people or something, you know. Because she didn't just limit uh, limited herself by black people, so for me it's like if you do something and then you, as you say you go to a shop and you see people lining up to a Indian shop and then you go to African shop, I think it's a kind of complex and um, complex and jealous because why I think black people don't like you know it's like they have a spirit of competition as we talked about already they have a spirit of competition because we all came from somewhere and the m like is like i'm going to europe i'm going to make money and stuff you know that mindset they have it so they're not gonna just try to support you while they, they came actually to make that money and when they see you making that money you know, they won't be happy because you know they won't be happy and it's for me it's like god when i'm doing something send me the people that are actually right for me send me the customer that are right for me, you know? 